Now, first today, we're talking about Shamima Begum. She's the 15-year-old girl who left Bethnal Green in East London with two friends to join Islamic State in Syria. That was five years ago. Now, the former Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, took away her British citizenship on national security grounds last year. Now, over a two-day trial, the Supreme Court will decide whether the former jihadi bride should be allowed back to the UK to appeal that decision. Now, the court's decision could take several months, um, but that's what we're talking about today. Um, Jane, should she be allowed back? This is, this is actually to fight for the right to get her British citizenship back, isn't it? Yes, she wants to come back to Britain to fight the, the decision by the former Home Secretary, uh, Sajid Javid, which was to strip her of her... British citizenship. Now, um, a lot of people in this country agree with that decision. Um, some don't. And the argument is whether she should be allowed to come back to the UK, whether she is now a sort of a, a you know, whether she was a young girl who knows not what she did, or, as the Home Office are arguing in the Supreme Court, is she somebody that was trained um, in, in kind of I yeah. by ISIS? Uh, is she somebody that is desensitised to violence, which is one of their arguments? Um, and should she not be allowed back to this country? So that is what the Supreme Court has to decide. In a way, she's become a bit of a poster girl, really, of, of uh, you know, jihadi brides, because, of course, she did give that interview. She was found in a, a Syrian refugee camp. Uh, and she's become, if you like, a bit of a political football, I would say. Um, but for me, perhaps the complexity lies in the fact that there are several other ISIS brides waiting on this decision. And I think what we can't have is that, you, you know, one size fits all. So I, I don't particularly have an issue with her coming back to Britain as long as we know that it's safe for her to, to <laughs> come back here for us. <clears throat> Um, but I don't think then that means that everybody should be allowed back. I think each case has to be dealt with individually. Yeah, we've got a lot of comments coming in, Judy. Uh, Doreen says she should definitely not be allowed back. She's been radicalised and shows no emotion or regret about what she's seen. To let this person back into our country and give her legal aid is not only a threat, but an insult to all those people who died. What do you think? You know, it's such a, a sensitive topic, isn't it? And I think, uh, to be honest, there's so much different bits of information that you pick up. I'm going to be real with you guys. I wasn't aware that the case at the moment was for her to give the rights to come back to fight back for her citizenship. So I think there's so much layers and context to it. However, yes, the safety of everyone is the, is, 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 is the most important thing. I just think to myself, when she made that terrible decision, she was only 15 years old. And in any other circumstances, it would be seen as groomed. Um, but if she was allowed back in the country to fight for her citizenship, I think the government would have to take into consideration all aspects of... Um, in, providing a space where it's safe, that they know that all security measures are taken. I mean, you mentioned her age hand. there, and um, Shirley says she chose that life. I knew what was right from wrong at that very young age, so at 15, she should have known that too. D you know, maturity, when it comes to maturity as individuals, we all have a different learning pattern. We all see things differently. We don't know what other circumstances at that time that made her make such a drastic decision. And someone at 15 might be more mature. We have to take into hand what she did at that time and see what is the safest and what circumstances can be put in place that, you know, whether that's her coming back and be able to fight for a citizen, whether she gets it or not, or whether the fact that she's lost lost three children within this situation. Mm. But it's, it's, it's such a sensitive topic and there's so much things to take into consideration. I mean, she was very, very young, Janet, but, you know, there isn't a lot of sympathy here from our viewers. I, I know that... Say, they're I saying, know. you know, she, she could be dangerous and that's mm. what... That's... How can... I, I fail to see how she can be dangerous when she is going to be brought back. If she's successful, she will be brought back in a very controlled environment to plead in a court for the right to get her citizenship back. I just think that in the intervening uh, years, she has had three children, one after the other. She, there's never been a time when she wasn't pregnant. Wow. I feel that um, it's compassionate to allow her to come back to argue her case. It's not agreeing with what she did. I think 
people that say, well, she served in the morality police in Syria. She was an advocate of their evil aims. I think you also have to think she was brainwashed. She was groomed. Um, who? Uh, she had children to care for. She had children that might have starved. In fact, what they did uh, get sick and, and one of them died of malnutrition. Who, who is a mother, wouldn't uh, do things that they might later regret to get something better for their children? That's all I'm saying. And the other thing is that in the intervening time uh, since uh, she went to Syria, the British government has agreed to accept up to 3 million UK, uh, Hong Kong residents uh, to, and to allow them to come to Britain if they want and to apply for British citizenship. Now, all those people are perfectly innocent. They haven't committed yeah, any crime, but I'm just saying threat, there's a double... They? They're not a terrorist threat. But I'm just saying that we have to allow her on compassionate grounds allow, alone to come back to the Jane, UK. Jane, a lot of people, a lot of this... I mean, so thank you for all your comments. We love you getting in touch, and I'm so sorry I don't have time to read all your comments. Um, but there's a lot of uh, comment here saying the taxpayer is going to have to pay for this. People seem quite resentful about that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just another thing on the taxpayer pile, isn't it? I mean, we're spending billions at the moment on all sorts of things, but... Um, I just think people have a very short fuse on, on this at the moment. And, you know, yes, you can argue that at 15 you're a child, but, you know, as um, Judy said earlier, there's a thing called the Gillick principle that the police use where they sort of apply it to, to children in terms of whether they know what, what they're doing or not when they make a decision. Um, but... Yeah, she chose to leave and, you know, whether she gets to come back or not is going to be in the hands yeah. of the Supreme Court. Well, we did ask you at home, should Shamima Begum be allowed back into the UK to fight for her citizenship? 93% um, of you, a very firm no. Uh, but thank you very much for your comments. We love you getting involved in the show.